best documentary was uh, I, I'm just quickly going to mention it because it that the one that this this is something that's very personal mm. to me because I've been a, a rock climber for a long time yeah. and I've followed Alex Honnold's career. So Free Solo winning the best documentary, which I still haven't seen and I'm really, really bummed out about it. If you're pushing the edge, eventually you find the edge. I can't believe you guys actually can watch. Hey Jimmy, do you copy? You just started climbing. Um, I wanted to see it in the movie theaters. I'm still trying to find a way to see it. They're still, still showing it mm. in Helsinki in certain theaters. Yeah. So I might go see it there. But that, that was, I was really, really happy about mm. that. And it, but it's, it's interesting to see how documentaries like this, because this is obviously a document, documentary that interests people because it, 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 it concerns somebody who's living such an extreme no. lifestyle. Uh, so that makes it interesting, but that's not enough to make. I mean, documentaries, bad documentaries are like mm. that are the litter of 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 nighttime television mm. in Finland. You no. can see like these, ex, you know, extremely obese people no, or extremely no, no. this and that, and and you know, people who 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 watch sheep for sexual gratification, and and you know, there, there's all no. sorts of that that sort of. Um, that sort of stuff. So, so that in itself isn't enough. Yeah, but give me a quick recap of what he actually does. So he's a free climber, yep. which means that he climbs without any safety harnesses or ropes. Yes. And in this documentary, he's attempting to climb something really a there's, big there's, rock. There's a there's a, a rock climbing mecca in, in the states in Yosemite, um, which is um, which is the sort of the the highest aspiration for a lot of rock climbers mm. and they usually they they climb the face it's called el capitan yeah and they climb the face usually over uh like maybe three days yeah. so you climb for how many hour how many ever hours you're able to climb and then you bring all your stuff with you and then mm. you sort of put up a makeshift tent yeah. on the side of the mountain and then in the morning you start again yeah. and it and because it's been climbed, the, the El Cap's been climbed since like the 1970s or the 1960s, mm. really, really intensely. And, and rock climbing has advanced so much, then people have started to make like speed records. And mm. there have been people who climbed it in day yeah. and stuff like that. But this is a wall that's, I can't remember exactly how, how high it is, but it's, it's like hundreds of meters up. No. Which doesn't really matter if you're if you're climbing without a safety harness. A harness usually ten meters is enough. No. So he's just going up it without anything but chalk, his hands and his uh, his climbing shoes. And he is he's a very 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 strange character. No. I mean he's he's you can clearly see he was in the in the Academy Awards. He he was brought on stage, and there is an element of Asperger's syndrome mm. or autism. I mean, he's very, very uncomfortable in front of crowds. Mm. And if you see like um, interviews of him, you can immediately sense that there's some part, you can see it in his eyes, mm. that there's some part of his brain missing. There's, mm. there's, there's something there that, you know, well, anybody who does this kind of thing, obviously, there has to be has to be mm. some kind of extraordinary person. But he is really, really. I mean, he really does not feel fear in ways that we feel fear. No. And it, apparently, it's interesting in the documentary because he falls in love with the girl, mm. and then he suddenly has to question what he's doing mm. because there's a suddenly he's faced with the idea that there's so much to be lost yeah. uh, if something goes wrong. And, and with rock climbing, with free climbing, rock climbing, you can be the best in the world and you can be like five meters up in the air mm. and then you take hold of a hold and the hold breaks. Yeah. And then you're dead. Yeah. It's really hard for me to grasp why he wants this. 
but if he doesn't do this stuff, he'd regret it. Everybody who has made free soloing a big part of their life is dead now. I haven't been injured in like seven years. I suddenly start getting injured all the time. What if something happens? <laughs> what if I don't see him again? I mean, that can happen. Even if you're the best no. at what you do, if, even if you make no mistakes, mm. And people usually make mistakes at no. some point no. or another. They make mistakes, and there's loads of free climbers that have died, no. uh, and and died stupidly in like, like these kinds of accidents that you just grab on to a hold, a hold that you've grabbed on to, like, mm. you know, you've done this thing like ten thousand times, no. and you've maybe climbed the same route like tens of times, mm. and then it's just that one hold that just tires out and cracks, no. cracks, and then you're done. No. So it is a very, very strange kind of it sport. It is, but also like really fascinating. Yeah. And I think that might be one of the reasons that he's so um, good at what he does is because um, what, from what I understand about Asperger's syndrome and autism and the spectrum that it has is that um, some parts of your brain do not function like... Uh, in the usual sense of the word, but then this functionality is shifted to some somewhere else. Yeah. So something like uh, maybe spatial awareness or uh, some sort of ability to calculate what should be done next in this extreme situation or this the thing yeah. about not really feeling fear, yeah. like being super relaxed in an environment that most people would be completely terrified, like 50 meters up the up to the air and you have nothing that holds you back. You're just with your hands and feet and it's insane. But I mean, it's so fascinating. Yeah. And I really want to see this documentary. Yeah, yeah, me too.